Hey everybody, Ernie Hatmaker here. Welcome to the garden. this bed this is the repurposed soil bed the only thing that we've really been doing here is um, now we have um, harvested a few of the uh, the greens that were here um, and then we let the rest go to seed but uh, yeah these are the plants that are left there's not that many weeds left because we've been spot watering to make sure that we're only getting plants that we recognize check this out I think that's popcorn that I had given up on. I think it might be Cargill Red popcorn. I'm not sure. Um, this is the smaller tomato, and I don't know what it is yet. Um, it's the younger one also. This one, it looks like somebody or something, you know, um, might have tried to come in to escape the wind. It was so windy yesterday. We thought it was going to rain, and it did not, so we have to water all of this. Um, but this tomato's gotten really big. The, um, tomatoes that are on it aren't getting any bigger. I do have more corn in, in a, a bucket here. This is, um, it might be glass gem corn. I don't know. <laughs> I'll know when it comes up. I have noticed though in the repurposed soil bed that there are like no tomatoes with blossom end rot. There is plenty of calcium and stuff because we were preparing this bed to be reused and so we had bone meal and blood meal and worm castings and all that good stuff and then all this stuff started growing. Alright, so our lupine completely died, so we put a tomato inside this uh, pot here. We'll try again, and maybe the violas will come up next spring that we have planted in there. This is jalapenos, and uh, they were labeled jalapenos. They weren't planted from seed. They were planted from... Um, they were planted from... Um, you know, plants that we had bought really small at the store, and I think they were mislabeled because one was a jalapeno and one looks like bell pepper. But there's lots of blossoms and lots of fruit. Now this did... Yeah, I just thumped the snail. Um, this bed has, you know, a few sunflowers, um, some spinach and beans. Uh, it does have grass, and you can tell the grasshoppers have been in here, but we've been trying to pull the grass out and um, make it where we're only supporting. Look at that. That baby melon. These, uh, I think these are Crowder peas, and they're flowering. This tomato is desperately screaming for some rain here. Basically what I've been doing is I've been placing these uh, water jugs. They're just gallon jugs. And uh, the first one had a leak and so we used it in these beds. And it stops us from having to water them so much. Now you can tell um, that the sun had fried a few of the, uh, the leaves and so we've been uh, trimming some of them back and letting the uh, the leaves focus on making the main thing the main thing and I mean it's starting to work because there's another cucumber that we missed yesterday um, and so I just refill these jugs every day and, and they act like drip jugs now when these uh, plants get a little bit bigger I'm going to add more soil in here so that this jug actually becomes a deep waterer Kind of like the one in this bed, 
with the melons and the sunflowers. Now these are some heavy feeders. But it doesn't matter because they get fed and everybody is thriving in here. All these pixie sunflowers are thriving along with the melons. And you can see I've got a little bit of uh, water left in that jug. So I'm going to have to refill it. But it takes so much um, time sometimes to have to keep watering and watering. And these jugs work great for the drip watering that they need. And it'll get deep enough to where I don't have shallow roots. But uh, it's certainly helping um, to keep water in these containers. I mean, containers, the, the good part is you can control kind of what goes in them. But the bad part is if they dry out, if you have, you know, good drainage, they dry out really easily. And when the sun is... 100 and whatever degrees that makes it a little easier to dry out. I need to find a stake because this tomato was knocked over and I tried to sit it back up and unless I stack a whole lot of dirt around it um, it's going to continue to lay over and that means I'm gonna have a wild crazy tomato. So anyway this is where the snake bean gourd is. All the flowers have blown off, but not before, you know, showing us a few more of them coming up. But we have about four or five uh, beans right now on each one. Uh, it looks like might have to minus one. That one looks like it's dying. Um, there's a lot of male flowers right now. I'm going to have to pull this back through before it hits the top because I've been trying to weave them. This one made it out on top and it's going to keep going up, up, and up and I'm going to train it to go down. So I'm going to weave it back down and that's how I'm going to start off um, keeping her on the trellis. And once a few more beans come on, I can decide which one's going to go. Look at that. There's a Katie did. I barely saw it. Do you see it? those things look just like the leaves and I missed it the first go around I probably would have tucked it back in like it was a leaf I don't know if it would have let me that might be what happened to uh, my little bean that was on this side but I will show you the one that's on this side and it's pretty, pretty, uh, nope, there it is, that one. It's about, um, an inch and a half long right now, but it's getting fatter, and I'm having to fertilize a lot to keep this going. Speaking of beans, this is a Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean that's surrounding this cage. This is what was planted, there was another pallet that was over here last season, this was planted with a squash and the bean never grew and now the bean has grown <laughs> it's weird how when you take one plant away the other ones are like yeah you want to see my two uh, watermelons that are out here these are the ones that came up from uh, the Alibaba that I had planted and I think this was one of the um, uh, not black diamond I think it was a sugar baby that had died on a vine out here and then the the seeds from the sugar baby rooted over the winter I guess now I know this isn't a full tour I'm just trying to show you what's new and what's gone out and these were the bachelor's buttons and they've gone to seed you can see the ryegrass that was mixed in with them has also gone to seed and there's a lot of seed on these blue buttons here. Oh, no, there's not. There's some on this one, though. But anyway, mixed in with a little ragweed, of course. There they are. And then this tomato, 
I think it's a yellow pear. It's getting flowers, and I'll know. Um, I know I've got it written down somewhere, but there's a bean and then a um, lemon starburst that's in there. That lemon starburst is loving having 80-ish, 100-ish degrees. That pepper loves the heat. And the cucumbers. We have harvested about 10 so far, and there's already more that are ready to go, and Ed just pulled them off yesterday, and we missed a couple, like that one down there. But there's lots of, of cucumber babies. For three cucumber seeds, that's not bad. That's three different vines. And let's not even forget the ones the mouse took. Now check this out. These are supposed to be growing in there. There's one that actually made it. This is a volunteer, and it might be an Arkansas traveler, and it might be a sweet million, because the sweet millions were sitting on top of these pallets last year, and the Arkansas travelers were sitting over there last year. So it could be either one. But these uh, uh, red uh, kale plants ought to be inside the pallet, and they're growing outside. It's amazing what the wind will do to uh, your situation. These things have little snail holes in them. Now, we scared the mouse, and he ran from um, over there somewhere to over here. We saw him hopping from pallet to pallet, so I think it's one mouse running all over the garden. And we're having to jump through hoops so that he doesn't end up with all of our seeds. Because we're trying to eat just like him. Oh, here's something you guys haven't seen. Now, I had planted Violet Queen sunflowers. That dark red one back there, that's a Violet Queen. Now, I don't know how it ended up with all of these yellowish ones because they were all planted, but you can even tell that it's got a red stem instead of the regular green like the others and it's got little heads on it like these and it makes me think that Violet Queen might produce other sunflower uh, colors besides the red so I'm going to make sure I get some seeds from that one I don't know if they're like dogs I haven't studied them enough I just saw the picture on the packet and I was like I gotta get some of those if you can see that sunflower kind of leaning down, that head is so heavy on that stalk. So heavy. But I've got sunflowers opening everywhere, including on Sunflower Row. But look, that one is starting to open. He wasn't open yesterday. I'm glad that you joined me today, and I'll see you guys in the comments.